Don't forget to like and subscribe to Jolie Knott's Crochet. Share with your friends. Hit that little notification bell so you can get notified when new patterns release. All our videos are available in left and right handed tutorials. Hi everyone, welcome back to Jolie Knott's Crochet. I'm Crystal and today we are going to be making the super simple bat wing sweater. Now this sweater we are going to work from the bottom band up, increasing with V stitches and then separating, working back and forth to create our armholes and then seaming up the top. Now, uh, like I said, it's very simple. We're working just V stitches and increasing on each side. The sizes available in this pattern are extra small to 4X in size. There is a written pattern link at the bottom. And I will also leave a link to the old pattern that has the ribbing for the arms. Now keep an eye out because I will have child sizes available. And once those sizes are available, I will leave the link in the description box below. Okay, so the yarn that we are going to be using today is Lion's Brand Comfy Cotton. The color I'm using is Flower Garden. This is a three weight yarn. Now you can use a very light four weight yarn if you'd like. Um, and it is 392 yards per cake and it's a 50% cotton, 50% polyester blend. Now I'm going to leave, scrolling up the screen, the approximate yardage that you're gonna need per size. This yardage is for the approximate height of somebody this size. Now if you are taller or shorter, keep in mind you are going to either use a little bit more yardage or less yardage, as this is written for the height of your body as well. For this, you are also going to be needing two different hooks. A five millimeter hook to, um, to work our band, and then we're gonna switch to a six millimeter hook to work the body of our sweater. You will also need two stitch markers, a tapestry needle to even your ends, and of course, some scissors. So in order to get started, what we're gonna do is take a slip knot, and we're gonna chain 16. Into the second chain from the hook, we're gonna put a single crochet, and then we're gonna single crochet into every chain that presents itself. So you should have 15 single crochets going down. Okay, when you get to the end of the row, you'll chain one, turn your work, and then we're gonna back loop only single crochet all the way across the row. This is going to be your repeat row. So you're just going to repeat row two, single crochet into the back loop only for 15 stitches, chain one, turn your work and continue. Now I will leave scrolling up here the amount of rows that you are going to need per size. Our gauge for our band, you wanna make sure that your gauge matches so that your, your band matches um, around your body. This will be um, several inches smaller than your waist. So I will leave the sizing along with the hip measurement um, and you'll really wanna go by the hip measurement. Okay, so for our gauging for our band, you're gonna want your 15 Stitches across should be three and a half inches. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 rows. So 15 stitches across will be three and a half inches and 14 rows down will be four inches. 
Okay, so now that I've got my band completed, I am going to chain one and fold my work together. So I'm gonna continue as if I was working into my next stitch on a regular row. So here's how we're gonna seam it together. I'm going to go through the back loop only of my first single crochet and then through the first chain space on the other side and then I'm gonna slip stitch. Go through the back loop only, the chain space on the other side, and we're just gonna slip stitch like that all the way down. When you get to the end, you'll chain one, and then we're gonna flip our band the other way, and that is now gonna be the inside of our sweater. What we'll do now is we are going to half double crochet into the side of every single row. So my, I'm gonna go into the top of each of my stitches. So this is the top of my first row. top of my next row. So going all the way around, you should have the same amount of half double crochet stitches as you have rows. Okay, so I'm here completing my half double crochet row and I'm just going to slip stitch to join. And now I'm gonna switch from my five millimeter hook to my six millimeter hook. And I'm gonna chain four. Now this is going to count as a double crochet and a chain one here and throughout the pattern. I'm going to have, I'm gonna double crochet into that same stitch we slip stitched into, and now I've just created my first V stitch. Now I'm gonna skip one stitch and into the next put another V stitch. Skip one stitch and into the next we'll put another V stitch, and that's your repeat. Skip one, V-stitch in the next. Skip one, V-stitch in the next. So what's gonna happen now is if you, you're gonna take the amount of rows that you had and divide that by two, and that's how many V-stitches you should have all the way around at the bottom of your sweater. Okay, here I am with my last V-stitch of the round. And I am just going to slip stitch to my first chain four to join. From there, I'll chain four again, counting as my double crochet and my chain one space. Double crochet into the same space to create a V. And then continue along with my V's
and I'm going to repeat this V-stitch row until I have nine rows total of V-stitches. So these V-stitches are not increasing and they're not decreasing. And once I've completed my nine rows of V-stitches, then I will meet you back here and I will show you how we'll begin to start increasing our V-stitches on each side. Okay, so here I have increased my nine rows of V-stitches. I don't have any increases on the end. Your work should start curving because we did increase here with our half double crochets. We skipped one stitch and put a V-stitch, one stitch, put a V-stitch. So your work should be with a large curve like this, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we are going to mark each side. We're gonna mark the side here to represent the side of our work. And with the same amount of V-stitches on the front and the back, we will then mark here. And that's where we're gonna do our increases for the next so ever many rows that I will let you know. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is when we join with our um, chain four. This is going to be a little bit differently because we're going to set ourselves up to work before this V-stitch. So we're going to join with a single crochet. Now this single crochet is going to separate these two V-stitches, one for the front and one for the back, and I am going to place my single crochet over that stitch. I'm sorry, I'm going to place my stitch marker over that single crochet. I'm going to scroll up on the screen how many V-stitches you should have per size. You'll take half of that amount of V-stitches and we'll put a stitch marker on this side to separate the front and the back. Okay, so here is my last V-stitch of the front and then my last, my first V-stitch of the back. So I'm going to put my second stitch marker in between those two V-stitches. Okay, now getting started with our increase. Our increases are going to be a two row repeat. So for each row, we will increase one V per stitch marker. So essentially you'll have two increases per row. So the first increase, the way we're gonna work that is we are going to chain four. That will count as your first double crochet and your first chain space. And then we're gonna double crochet right over that stitch marker, right over the stitch, the single crochet. So this now, is the increased V-stitch for this row, and this will now be considered, well, the center, I guess, the center of the side. So I'm gonna move my stitch marker up. And this will now be the new center for this row. Now working down the front, we will make a V-stitch into every V-stitch to the next stitch marker. So go ahead and do that and I will meet you back over there. Okay, so I've reached my next stitch marker. This is the second increase of my row. Remember we're increasing twice, one V stitch per stitch marker. So in between these two V-stitches, that's where I'm gonna add my increased V-stitch. And this is now my center point. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker out. 
and move it up to my new center point, even though it's on the side. Now I'm gonna work V-stitches into every V-stitch back to the front where we began and I will meet you back to show you how we are going to join and begin on round 12. Okay, here I am at the end of row 11. This is my first increase. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain to join, and then I'm going to slip stitch over one more chain. So my increase here, I'm going to turn this one V stitch into two. So I'm gonna put two V stitches. However, our first V stitch is gonna be right now, and our last V stitch, the second one, is gonna be when we come back around. We're gonna work over that slip stitch here. So I'm going to chain four, double crochet into the same V stitch, and I'm not gonna move my stitch marker just yet. I'm gonna now work my V stitches on top of every V stitch down to my next stitch marker, and then I will show you how we work our, our um, increase for round 12. Okay, here is how our increase is going to work in round 12. My center V stitch is here. Remember, we are putting two V stitches, we're increasing a V stitch. So we're gonna add two V stitches into that one V stitch. And then what I'm gonna do is move my stitch marker up and place it between these two V stitches. And when you get to the next round, you'll repeat like we did in round 11, and that's where your V stitch increase will be. Now I am going to V stitch into every V stitch back to the beginning, and I will meet you right back there so I can show you how we are going to join and complete the round with our next V stitch increase. Okay, here we are at the end of round 12. And this is where we added our first V stitch into our middle V stitch. So now we need to put our second one. So just working over that slip stitch, we're gonna go ahead and add our second V stitch. And then just like we did down here, we are going to single crochet to join and we'll repeat round 11 by chaining four, working your double crochet over your V-stitch. And now this is your added V-stitch increase for the next round. I am going to leave this stitch marker here. Well, I'm actually gonna move it a little. This will be the first row of my increase. And this is just gonna help me for when I count my increases to know where my first row of my increase started. And if you have, you will want to go ahead and grab one more stitch marker and place it in that V because this is where we will then do our next increase in the next round. So you're gonna repeat rounds 11 and 12. You're gonna, I'm gonna scroll up on the screen. Now this is gonna be based more on height than your size. Your sizing was your band with your hip measurements and now the, the repeats are gonna be based on your height. So check the repeats for your height and you'll know if you have to repeat it eight, nine, 10, or 11 times. Meet me back here when you're finished with your repeats and I'll show you how we are gonna separate panels for our front and our back. 
Once you are done with your repeats, we're gonna start to work back and forth in separate panels for the front and the back so that we can create an armhole. Now this will not have any increasing or decreasing. What we're going to do is once you have slip stitched, this is your first V of the row and this is your last V of the back row. So I'm going to chain three and that's gonna count as a beginning double crochet. And now I'm going to put one V stitch into the first V stitch. From there, I'm going to place one V-stitch on top of each V-stitch all the way down. I'm going to continue that and I will meet you back at the next stitch marker. Okay, so here is the last V-stitch of this side. And remember, we're just working back and forth without any um, increasing or decreasing. This is not a V-stitch, this is the center. So this is the first V-stitch of, this is the last V-stitch of the side, and then this is the first one of the next side. So how I'm gonna end this row is just put a double crochet right into the last part of that V. And that is the end of the first row for the amount of repeats that you need for your size. So now we're gonna chain three Turn your work and we're going to do the same thing now going back down the other side. So my first V-stitch is going to be in my first V-stitch and you'll work your V-stitches all the way down for your correct amount of rows. When you get to the end You will end with a double crochet on top of your chain three, and then when you turn your work, your first V will be in this V stitch, okay? So do that for the correct amount of rows, and then do it for the other side as well, so you have two sides that are now then split open, and I will meet you back here so we can get started on uh, sewing up the neckline and finishing up all our fin finishing touches. Okay, everybody, here I am. I have completed my rows for my armholes. Now, you're gonna wanna make sure that you leave a long tail for sewing up your shoulder and your arm seam. Um, what we're doing here is we are finding our middle V stitches. I will leave on the screen for you how many V stitches per size you should have for the middle. Now, once I count them out, or once you count yours out, you're gonna put a stitch marker between those V stitches through both sides, your front and your back. And this is gonna be the opening for your neck hole. Feel free to customize this opening for the size that you would like. I had some of my testers leave extra V-stitches open if they wanted a wider neck or if they wanted it to sit off the shoulder a bit. So you can customize the neck opening to what your desired opening is. From there, we'll move to the side and then we'll begin whip stitching from our arm all the way up to the neck and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So here's how we're gonna do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the long tail end that we left and thread our tapestry needle. Starting from our first stitch, we're gonna go through the top two loops, so through your V-stitch. And then on the other side, one side's gonna be a um, double crochet, one side's gonna be a chain three, and then we're gonna go through the chain three on the other side and pull through. Now we just want to make sure that as we're pulling our stitches through, they don't tangle up. 
Now I'm going to go through the V-stitch, the double crochet in my V-stitch, and through the double crochet in my V-stitch on the other side, and pull it through, through my chain, and through the chain on the other side, and pull that through. Through the double crochet, the V's on the double crochet, and the same on the other side. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way up until you get to your neck, um, the stitch marker for your neck, and you'll do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and we've got one last step to do before we're completed. We're gonna work on our neckline to finish up the neckline. All right, so finish whip stitching your guys's together and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so I have just completed sewing up my seams for my arms, and now I'm left with my neckline. What we're going to do is we're just going to finish this up with a single crochet row to eliminate the stretch that it's going to give. Otherwise, it's going to stretch way too much. So I am going to attach my yarn. going to attach my yarn to one of the ends so I have one less end to sew in and what I'm going to do I am going to put my hook into the first double crochet of the side and pull up a loop Chain one for height, and now I'm going to single crochet into every double crochet and chain space all the way around. And that's it. That's our super simple uh, closing up the neckline and finishing that off is just single crocheting into every stitch and chain space that presents itself. Okay? Thank you everybody for watching Jolie Knott's Crochet. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Facebook under Jolie Knott's Crochet. And if you're not a member of our Jolie Knott's Crochet community group on Facebook, find us and share with us what you've created.